If you are getting ready for an exam in 2023, it's probably crossed your mind what is in the PMBOK Guide 7th edition and how come people aren't absolutely making me read it in my training. Well, the reason why you're not being made to read it is because a lot of the contents for your exam is in the 6th edition and in process groups a practice guide. So why don't we have a very quick mega crash course for the PMBOK 627. Here's the breakdown. In the sixth edition, it was broken down by the five process groups in the standard for project management, which is in the second part of the book from the pages 555 thereabouts in the sixth edition. But in the seventh edition, they hit you with this first, introducing you to project management, a system for value delivery, which is projects, programs, and portfolios. And we talk about project management principles stewardship all the way on down to change, which I will review with you in a little bit. But in the PMBOK Guide 6th edition, chapters 4, all the way on down, continue that narrative of knowledge areas. In the 7th edition, though, you don't have that. Instead, you have these things called performance domains, which are classifications of things that could happen in project management, but they're not broken down by process group or knowledge area, which makes them more esoteric and less warm and fuzzy where project managers who have gone through the sixth edition are concerned. And that's why a lot of people are not warming up to the seventh edition, all that. There's the appendices, the glossary, and the index in both publications. And there's also PMI Standards Plus, which has more information that is excluded from the seventh edition. Now, making a case for project management in general, you could look at project management either from a traditional lens where scope is fixed, schedule and budget are estimated or flexible, if you will, versus agile or adaptive where schedule and budget are fixed and scope is flexible. Now, in the PMBOK Guide 6th edition, believe it or not, there is actually more agile mention than in the 7th edition. Because in the 6th edition, you have concepts, trends, tailoring, and considerations for agile at the beginning of every chapter. So agile is actually pretty solidly covered in the 6th edition. In the 7th edition, believe it or not, it is not that well covered. For the 7th edition to come up to a better level, it would need to include some of the contents that are in the Agile Practice Guide, which unfortunately it won't. And that's why you should be reading the Agile Practice Guide alongside any 7th edition material that you're looking at, okay? Let's jump straight into the principles in the 7th edition. Principles are as follows. Be a diligent, respectful, and caring steward of all the resources entrusted to you, to the responsibilities entrusted to you. Number two, collaborate. Create a collaborative environment. Number three, effectively engage with stakeholders. Number four, focus on value. If it's not valuable, don't do it. Number five, be a systems thinker. See the bigger picture. Recognize, evaluate, and respond to systems interactions. Number six, demonstrate leadership behaviors. Number seven, Tailor your processes, your tools based on the project context. Number eight, quality. Build quality into processes and deliverables. Number nine, navigate complexity. There are different ways you can navigate complexity, but one of them is breaking down the work into smaller pieces, delivering in an incremental fashion and planning iteratively. Number 10, optimize risk responses. Number 11, adaptability. Embrace adaptability and resiliency. Again, being agile is a key to being resilient. Number 12, change. Enable change to achieve the envisioned future state. Every project is a vehicle to move an organization from a current state to a future state. By enabling change to achieve the envisioned future state, we are help in our project management. And that's the summary of the 12 principles of project management. Now, you might recall from the sixth edition, the five process groups of initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling, and closing. Well, 
think about building on these five by understanding the knowledge areas as represented in the sixth edition and then seeing how these things I'm about to show you map onto this. So all of this great stuff that you might have learned from the sixth edition should be resting solidly on principles that I just showed you. Stewardship, collaboration, all the way on down to change. To go a step further in the seventh edition, the seventh edition categorizes what we do in project management in different domains. We have the stakeholder domain, the team domain, the development approach and life cycle domain, planning domain, project work domain, and you can see project work spans across a wide area. We have the delivery performance domain. We have uncertainty and measurement domains. All of these amount to the eight performance domains. And I am going to cover these very quickly with you to assure you that you already have some background knowledge about this. If I backtrack for a second, you can see how these map to different components on the screen. The stakeholder domain maps to the stakeholder knowledge area. The team domain maps to the resource knowledge area. Development approach and life cycle maps to the integration knowledge area. The planning domain maps to planning as a whole. Project work domain maps to integration specifically and a lot of the components from executing and communication as well. The delivery domain maps to scope and quality, and the uncertainty domain maps to risk. The measurement domain maps to cost, and it maps to monitoring and controlling in general. Now you've seen how it all maps, let's examine the eight domains in more detail. Number one, stakeholder performance domain. You've got to identify your stakeholders, Common sense tells us to prioritize our stakeholder focus and monitor the engagement and work on understanding the stakeholder needs as we engage them. We should also analyze our stakeholders continually. The second domain, team performance domain, helps us to see project team management and leadership as been very important for a project manager. Understanding project team culture and what makes a team a high performing team and how to get your team to that with great leadership skills and tailoring your leadership styles, keeping in mind things like the Hersey Blanchard situational leadership model will help you digest this chapter. The third domain is development approach and life cycle. When we talk about life cycles, you also want to join the word development and cadence with it. When you understand the life cycle, you understand your development approach, be it iterative, agile, predictive, incremental, whatever it is, you also need to address the cadence. The delivery cadence is the pulse at which you deliver whatever you are delivering and also the pulse in which the customer can expect you to deliver an increment. We could talk about delivery cadence. We could talk about releases. There are many topics that come in here. The development approach is to get a better understanding of this. I always recommend that people read up about incremental, iterative, predictive, and agile in the Agile Practice Guide, especially pages 18 and 19, the table and the figures in there. You should also be aware of what dictates your selection of a development approach. The first question is going to be, can we deliver in an incremental fashion? Can we develop this in iterations? Lastly, we have life cycle and phase definitions, which in my mind are very well done in the Agile Practice Guide. I would definitely advise you take a look at that. And then when you understand these first five, you got to align the delivery cadence, the development approach, and the life cycle. Going to chapter four, the planning domain, the summary is there's so much stuff to plan. There is schedule and scope, there's cost, quality, resources, communication, risk, procurement, stakeholder, 
And this is where we take down each one. We first of all identify the plan and variables. We have the project team composition and structure and communications that needs to be planned. Physical resources need to be planned. So do procurements, changes, and even metrics. We also need to align all of these so that we have a streamlined project management plan. The fifth domain is project work performance domain. When we talk about project work here, we address project processes, balancing competing constraints, your knowledge of the triple constraint, that triangle and the inverted triangle I showed you in the beginning will come in handy, maintaining project team focus, project communications and engagement, managing physical resources, things that you would see under the executing process group, they fall in here. Working with procurements, monitoring new work and changes is also part of this discussion, as well as the concept of learning throughout the project, which we would refer to as managing project knowledge in the sixth edition. The sixth domain is all about delivery. The delivery performance domain first of all talks about delivery of value. If you don't have a good understanding of value, know that value is the net quantifiable benefits that the customer derives from a deliverable. This is well covered in the sixth edition. The delivery of value is important through deliverables. Quality also comes into play and also understanding that not every project ends the way we expect. We call these sub optimal outcomes. We do expect to have suboptimal outcomes. The question is how do we handle them positively? We use that as a vehicle to learn lessons to get better. Now for those of you who are practitioners and you are trying to get better in your project management, I want to call your attention to the ticker tape below. It's projectmanagementmaturity.com we have classes to help you pragmatically apply all of this stuff, the PMBOK guide, to really get to dry land on your exam. So if you want to check that out, do so. Also, if you're just joining us, we're talking about the PMBOK guide 7th edition. We're combing through the domains and we're about to round up. If you've enjoyed it so far, I would appreciate you hit the like button and subscribe so that you're notified when I come online with additional video and content. Moving to the final one number seven and eight. Number seven is measurement. Measurement is one of my favorites in the seventh edition. This is one of the areas I feel was lacking in previous editions. This is where we talk about establishing effective measures, really honing in on what to measure so that we're not just measuring for measuring sake. We also here define different types of measurements. One of the measurements you don't want is a vanity metric, which at the end of the day is just vanity because it doesn't really tell you anything helpful for your project. We don't want to just measure anything for measuring sake. We want to measure because we're getting value from it. So this sensitizes you to that. How do you present information that you've measured? Some of the pitfalls of measurement, troubleshooting performance, growing and improving all topics talked about here. Again, this is one of my favorites. I would highly recommend looking into this topic of measurement to make you more efficient in your organization. Measure the right stuff for the right purpose. The final one here, chapter eight, uncertainty performance domain. Uncertainty addresses a number of topics. One, general uncertainty. Number two, ambiguity. Number three, complexity. And four, volatility. Combine all of those together along with the topic of risk, which is uncertainty that can affect your project, positively or negatively, then you have a good understanding of the uncertainty performance domain. The summary is to manage uncertainty, you can break things down into smaller pieces. You can use a more adaptive approach and you can intentionally manage risks, intentionally look for how to respond 
to the world of ambiguity, complexity, and volatility around you. That, my friends, concludes our review of the PMBOK Guide 7th Edition. Trust me when I tell you it's as simple as that. If you're looking for training, coaching, and additional help for your exam, go on down to the website. It's praiseon.com. It will be a pleasure to see you in our classes one of these days. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. And be aware that on praiseon.com, we've got the full version of this course where my buddy Roy and I go over this content for going to seven hours. Break it down into four sessions. For those of you who may be PMPs and you're curious to learn more from a more practitioner lens with an audience of PMPs who are in the class, go on down to our website, praiseon.com, and look for our training on the PMBOK Guide 7th edition. Thank you very much. You take care and bye for now.